I'm Phil Hill. And I'm Michael Feldstein. Welcome to eLiterate TV. And in this episode, we want to talk about learning analytics and adaptive learning. At Educause 2013, it seemed like you could hardly go anywhere without hearing these terms used. Many vendors are offering their analytics or their adaptive learning products. But of course, these terms can mean a lot of different things. Yeah, you know, at the most basic, uh, I had a high school drama teacher who used to say that half of acting is reacting. And really half of teaching is reacting too, which involves noticing what the student is doing and then responding appropriately. Well, if you think about the range of those reactions from a teacher, whether they're teaching math or English, whether they're teaching at uh, an elite college or a community college or an online college, whether they're concerned with the student responding to one particular point in one particular lesson, or across their academic uh, habits that are enabling them to have success across the curriculum. There are a lot of different kinds of reactions that we can have. And so there are a lot of different things we might mean by analytics and by adaptive software, a lot of different ways in which the software can help the teacher to react to the student appropriately. Sure, and it's not just the teacher, of course, that benefits or could potentially deal with um, learning analytics in particular. There are institutional needs for learning analytics. How well is this program doing? How well do students move on beyond an individual course? So there are institutional issues that get into um, learning analytics as well. At Educause 2013, we had the opportunity to talk to McGraw-Hill's Al Essa and Pearson's Jason Jordan about this new movement in ed tech. A lot of folks are doing pretty interesting work right now with uh, analytics and adaptive technologies. Schools are, LMS companies are, startup companies are, but chances are, if you're a faculty member on a campus, the odds are that the first adaptive or analytics product that you're gonna run into is from a textbook publisher. So we're here with the two guys uh, from textbook publishers who think a lot about this stuff, and they're gonna tell us a little bit about what they're learning. Al Essa from McGraw-Hill, and Jason Jordan from Pearson. Full disclosure, uh, both Pearson and McGraw-Hill are companies that do business with MindWires, one of the co-producers of eLiterate TV. So uh, Phil and I like to talk about analytics being eyes and ears for teachers. What kind of data, what kind of information can these analytics give to the teachers that will help them as they try to help their students? Yeah, I, I think my starting point uh, when we look at come to data First uh, is the goal of analytics should not be to provide data. Uh, I, I don't think of analytics in terms of data. First, uh, our, our goal should be to create a beautiful student experience. Mm. Uh, and so anytime you create a, a great experience, uh, users will gravitate towards it. And if you create a sucky experience, people are going to leave. Mm -hmm. Right? So. Uh, it, very, very important uh, design philosophy principle is how, how do we create the best overall experience for the student, the learner, and the instructor, mm -hmm. and anybody else who's uh, in that mix. Mm -hmm. uh, now, in terms of data, the specific types of data that's important for analytics is, uh, again, this is based on research. Mm -hmm. uh, we know based on four decades of research that if students are not engaged, mm -hmm they will not succeed. So Tinto and others have uh, come out with study after study. So one very important slice of data is, are students engaged? Yeah. Okay, and, and we need to know that not after they bomb their midterm or even one week mark, two week mark. Uh, essentially, the data uh, needs to be available in real time. Second is, are the students getting it? Right? So student could be engaged and we understand uh, uh, whether they're engaged or not but they may be struggling with a particular concept. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're really at the bedrock of uh, learning analytics is uh, having really good data about engagement. Mm -hmm. And second is uh, data about our students getting it. So all of these things are things that a, a good teacher, when she has time, uh, will catch through the course of her work. But if you're a faculty member and you're 
teaching four or five courses a semester and you've got a lot of students and a lot going on, you might not catch every detail, even if your load is reasonable. You just might miss what this student is doing while you're focusing on that one in the classroom, right? So, Jason, you've got actually a fairly wide purview. You've got um, math, you've got English, and you've got student success. Can you give an example of the kind of behavior you're looking to predict? Sure, about 50% of the time um, a student doesn't persist in a course or doesn't persist to get a degree or you know, has a retention issue has to do with something outside of their academic work. Mm -hmm. It has to do with uh, their home situation, their uh, transportation situation. Um, and, and I think we can do, we can better service the education community by sharing that data with them as we collect it from the students. If you know you have an, you're teaching an online class and there are 10 students in that online class who have self-identified um, as having persistence issues, yeah. you might want to pay a little bit more attention to them as part of your online class. And so that is the type of data that we want to integrate um, on a going forward way so we can give the, the instructor you know, a, an entire picture of the student rather than sort of just the academic side of student behavior right now. Okay, so now you're talking about two pieces that the average teacher might not have. You're talking about data about their performance outside of the class which they may or may not see depending on what access they have to content in their administrative systems. And then you're talking about what we're learning from patterns that we're seeing in that data. Okay, well, this is a student who, for example, lives off campus, and it turns out in this college, students who live off campus are a little bit more at risk. They're, they're more likely, they're commuters, maybe they're holding down a job while they're taking class and something I need to worry about. So Al, we're, we're talking about uh, inserting a machine, essentially, into this very human process of teaching and learning. And um, machines are very good at some things and not so good at other things. Are we in danger of focusing too much on what the machines can understand and can do and making the education all about what's measurable about a machine rather than what the student needs to learn and what the teacher has to offer? Yeah, uh, great point. Let's look at some of the things that machines don't do well. In the next few years, I don't see that machines will have a role in, in these types of things. So one, one example, very integral to learning is inspiring uh, the learner, right? That's something that uh, a great instructor, a great guide, uh, a student's peers, mm -hmm. uh, so sources of inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see that uh, machines uh, are, are good at that. Mm -hmm. uh, or if they are, I don't, I, I, I haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. uh, come back to design. If, if analytics is really gonna take off uh, and be successful and uh, lead to uh, results, uh, we'll have to create a beautiful experience. And, and one way to do that, n not the only way to do that, is uh, visualizations. Mm -hmm. the, one of the best ways to surface insights when, when, when you have to make a decision among a range of cho choices and options, give me the insight. Mm -hmm. Don't give me data, don't inundate me with data, but uh, give, give me that visualization or that insight that, I'm, that can help me take it to the next step. A teacher's aid, essentially. Jason, we're talking about here what computers do well and teachers do well, and it really reconfigures everything that goes on in the classroom, or at least it could in some circumstances. How do you think this changes the role of the teacher? And if you're a teacher, uh, who's bringing one of these technologies into your classroom, what's the most productive way to think about integrating it into what you do well? You know, that, that's a big question that we get um, from instructors all the time. How do, how do I integrate this technology? What works best? And I think the, uh, the folks who are teaching these classes are still trying to figure that out. The, the technology is just another tool um, that, that a teacher uh, can bring into their classes. It's a tool that more and more students are coming to expect as part of their learning experience because you know they've, they've grown up with this technology. And so they're not only comfortable with it, they're demanding it um, a, as they go you know, into these college courses. And I think instructors um, who incorporate uh, the technology well are, are the ones who um, both understand what it can do and, and more importantly understand what it can't do. Mm -hmm. and, and so the successful instructors that I've talked to um, tend to use the technology um, 
uh, to free them uh, to do the things that they love about teaching. Thank you, gentlemen, for what's been a really interesting and productive conversation. Obviously, this is just the first step in your conversation as you think about how to bring these technologies onto campus and incorporate them into your teaching practices. So that was interesting. These guys spend a lot of time thinking about analytics and adaptive software, and they definitely know their stuff. We're asking you now, as you think about your campus and what you've heard about these technologies, and you think about what aspects of them sound intriguing to you and what aspects sound a little worrisome to you, where would be the best place for you to start in your environment to experiment with learning analytics and adaptive technologies.